to stop at 11 or 11.15 for questions. Um, at 11 uh, works for questions, and then um, if, if there are no questions, if you have additional tips, that's great, but um, this is definitely one of those in which we have had a pretty good amount of questions in the past. Okay, sounds great. Um, we can also see your screen. Uh, things look good, and I will be uh, dropping a link to the materials here in, in a minute in the chat. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. Well, welcome, everybody, to Word 365 Tips. Um, my name is Sandy Rylander, and, um, yes, I've been training here for a long time. I started actually teaching... Um, probably close to 30 years ago, uh, teaching WordPerfect, Lotus, and DOS. After I graduated from UC Berkeley, I went to work for IBM for about eight years and then started, started working with you guys. Um, and Word has come a long way in all those years uh, and started teaching Word quite a few years ago as well, um, probably a good 20 plus years ago. And there's so many cool things that you can do in Word. It's hard to pick um, which tips you want because just about everything is a tip, right? So I tried to pick some things that hopefully you don't know about. I'm sure some of them you will. Uh, if you're worried that you missed something, know that you are going to get a document with all the tips in there. So, and if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask immediately. Um, so we're just gonna start with some screen tips. One of the things that I didn't know for a long time, you know you have the tabs going across your ribbon, and I always would move my mouse to get to the different tabs, not realizing that if you point to a tab, and all you do is use your scroll, bar, um, scroll tool on your mouse, that it just goes from tab to tab, so you can just be in one spot and just scroll to all the different uh, ribbon tabs. So that's a kind of a neat new, not new, but something that a lot of people didn't know about. Um, so that goes across the top of your screen. Then another thing that you can do, just simply using your mouse and the scroll tool, is if you hold your control key down, you can zoom out or zoom in on your document. Okay, just holding your control key down and zooming. Also in the bottom right-hand corner, you have a view zoom that goes uh, all the way down to a very like 10% view. So it gives you the ability to get an overall view. Of course, you can't see the text in the document, but it's really nice to see, well, should I have a page break here or not? Can I really fit this dialog box here? You can get a nice overview. And it's just so easy to scroll between there. And if you really want to get big, you can go all the way up to 500%. And then right in the middle is the 100%. That's the view zoom in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. Then a lot of people don't realize that you can add different things to the bottom of your screen. This is called the taskbar, okay? Notice that I have section. I don't know if you use sections in your documents, but if you ever have things like headers and footers that are different, the only way to really make them different is to have sections in your document, or you may have sections in your document so you can landscape one page or something like that. So it's nice to be able to see the section it's also nice uh, if you're doing pleadings to be able to see how far down you are on a page, um, how many inches down you are on a page. And so notice when I click here at, at this paragraph symbol, notice that down here it says at 6.8 inches. So it's saying 6.8 inches from the top. And since legal briefs need to be at three inches, right, um, rather than you being too high, you can just click up in your document and then down here you can see how far down the page you are. But those two things are not standard on your taskbar. They do not show when you are set up. So all you have to do to make things show that aren't showing, and this is something I teach in all my classes. If you've ever taken one of my classes in the last 20 plus years, you know that I tell you if you don't know how to do something, you should always right click on whatever you don't know how to do. So that's one thing that if you learn nothing else in this entire hour that's going to be super beneficial to you is that if you don't know how to do something, right click on it. So if we don't know how to add things to our taskbar, we're simply going to click with our right mouse button on the taskbar, and that shows you all the different things that you can put on it. And the ones I think are particularly useful are the section. So notice it has a check mark. So if I click on it again, it'll take the check mark away and notice it's gone away, which I don't want, I, I like having it there. So I'd love to add section. 
I love, especially for attorneys and, and their support staff, I like vertical page position so that for pleadings that you can be in the right spot. Um, and some people like to have word count. I think word count is already on there, but these are some of the things that I like to have on. Some of them are put on there automatically and some of them you can put on yourself. Okay, but that's, as, that's how easy it is. So let's look at some of the other things. The nice thing not about having section is not just so you can see what section you're in. Notice, by the way, that I have a section break here. So if I click here, it should be saying that I'm at section two. And notice it does tell me that I'm at section two. It makes it really nice. But the cool thing is, if you have section showing and you click on it, then it will go to the go to, automatically bring up the go to dialog box which allows you to go to sections, go to bookmarks, go to footnotes, endnotes, whatever it is that you want to go to, go to a page number, whatever it is you'd like to do. All these different things are available. And it, it also brings up, because it's all together, it also brings up the find and replace dialog box. So simply by clicking on section, you can get really quickly to a page in your document. You can just type in page six or whatever, and it'll go straight to page six. If you click on page number, down here, um, it will bring up something called the navigation pane. Are many of you familiar with the navigation pane? Have you used it much in the past? One of the nice things, if you're in pages, once again, you can sort of see what page you want to be on relatively quickly, and you can click on the page you want to go to, which is nice. The other thing it does is show you results. If you are actually doing a find um, in your document, it will, it will show you, like, for instance, if I type in, um, something like, well, let's just type in navigation. Notice that it shows me a little snippet of every place in my document that has the word navigation. So it's really nice, instead of having to hit the down arrow and go from place to place like normally you would do in Find, you could just see the one that is in the text that you want, click right on it and go right to that spot. Not to mention all everything is highlighted in yellow so you can really quickly see um, all the different places that that word is presented. So that's a, a nice feature as well. But one of the things that I love about the navigation pane that I use all the time, especially if you're doing long documents and if you're using styles, are you guys familiar with styles? Styles are just a group of um, formatting characteristics that are given a name. For instance, if I click in here, do you see how this says heading one? It means it's a heading one style. And we've actually done trainings on styles in the past. We don't have time to do a whole training on it now. But a heading one style, so it has a lot of formatting characteristics. For instance, you, um, you can see, I believe that's a color blue. If I go to the home page, it's bold, it's um, Cambria, it's 13 point. All of those things are happening because I took all of those formatting characteristics and called it a heading one style. And heading one styles automatically allow you to, if you click on the headings tab, automatically allow you to see all of these different headings, which is an amazing way to sort of see an outline of absolutely everything you've got going on in your document. Not only is it an outline, but it is also like an online table of contents. All I have to do if I want to get to this topic is click on this topic and it takes me right to that topic. If you're with NJP and I've done your, your pleading programming for you, in your pleadings, all of your headings are done in heading styles. So if you have any sort of long pleadings, then all you have to do is open up this navigation pane. You'll see the different headings and just simply be able to click on them. But not only that, another super cool feature that you have with this is you can actually move any of these um, different sections around. So for instance, let's say I want the quick access toolbar to go below the editing do a document. I can, if I want, I can close this up so I'm just seeing the quick access toolbar and I can drag it down wherever I want, let go, and that just moved that whole, it's called a family, not really a section, but a family. A family is everything from a heading and below. So this would be one family. This would be your next family. So it'll take everything in the family and move it. If you don't want to move the whole family, you can simply click on, here's add remove tools, 
And if I want that to be under add tools, not on the ribbon, then I can just simply drag that one item below the other item. Okay. Um, so this navigation pane is amazingly useful and it goes into a lot more detail in my document, but is there, are there any questions on using the navigation pane to get to places or to uh, move text or copy text? No? Okay, then we'll keep on going. Um, another thing that a lot of people don't realize is that these little arrows in the bottom right-hand corner um, of each of your, not each of them, but of these groups on your ribbon, those are called dialog box launchers. And so if you want to do more that has to do with font or more that has to do with paragraph, if you just go to the bottom right-hand corner and click, that brings up the dialog box for you. So it gives you everything there is to do for formatting a paragraph versus just the things that they've chosen to put on the ribbon or everything there is to do for working with fonts. Okay. Another thing a lot of people don't realize, a lot of people go to this part of their um, title bar to restore their screen, meaning to size it down, right? The problem is then if that goes off your screen, a lot of people feel like they need to move the screen back in order to maximize or bring it back to full size. And that's not true. Anywhere on this title bar, if you just double click on the title bar, it will automatically maximize and double clicking also will restore. So you don't have to see that right hand tip in order to uh, maximize or restore your document. Okay. All right. Um, sometimes in a document like this, you may want to go, this is considered a graphic, right? And you may want to go from graphic to graphic, or you may want to go from footnote to footnote or whatever you want to search for these things. Another way of doing that, if you're in the navigation pane, is you can just click on the down arrow under the navigation pane, and you can click on graphics or tables or footnotes, and that will automatically so if I say graphics, then it brings me to the next graphic. It also highlights in yellow every single uh, I, heading that has a graphic in it. And now if I click my down arrow, it'll take me from graphic to graphic to graphic. So that's another way of searching for things. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> a lot of people may already know this, but I keep running into people that don't. So I'd like to click on file open. And notice that I have a bunch of these documents on the top. They're the top, the documents I use most frequently. And I just wanted everybody to see that if you want a document to stay at the top because you use it a lot, all you have to do is any of these documents on your recent list, this is considered recently used list, anything you see there that you would like to have be always available, if you hover over it, you will see a little push pin off to the right. If you click on that push pin, it will automatically put that up here with the rest of the documents that never leave your recently used list. If then you decide, you know what, I really am not using it as much anymore, you can click on the push pin again to unpush pin it, um, and it will drop back in the order of, uh, of just being in your recent list, and it will eventually fall off. But that's a really nice way, and it's not just in Word, it's in Excel, it's in PowerPoint, all the different applications have these push pins. And the reason I'd like to teach it, even though some of you may have known it in the past, because you're not seeing it now, unless you hover over the particular document, you may not know that it's still there, and it is, okay? Okay. Um, so a lot of people don't realize that search has become more than just a search. Notice when I just hover over search in the upper right-hand corner on my uh, ribbon that it says, tell me. And it used to say, tell me what to do. And what it does, the cool thing about it, is if you just start typing something in, by the way, notice that it shows me what I've recently searched for. But if I 
want to search for, let's say, how to do a footnote. I have no idea how to do a footnote. And let's, let me click where I'd like a footnote potentially in my document. I come up here and I type in footnote. Or maybe I do know how to do a footnote, but you know, you have like 12 different tabs to choose from. I don't remember which tab it's on anymore and I just want to do it. So if I start typing in footnote, notice the very first item on there shows a footnote. And if I click on it, notice what it's going to do from the um, little pop-up box. It says it's going to insert a footnote. So without you having got, selected the right tab or know anything about doing a footnote, all you have to do is click in your document where you wanted it, started the tell me routine, click on footnote, and notice that it automatically put a little one up in my document, superscripted, automatically put in the footnote, and let me start typing in whatever note I'd like. Okay? So this tell me feature is so nice for things that you don't do frequently, you forget how to do, and you just want it to do it for you. Okay, it's almost like somebody sitting over your shoulder trying to help you. If I want to do another footnote and still don't know what I'm doing, I can click again wherever I want the next footnote. And because it shows you what you recently did, I could just click on it again. And it those things that you used recently keep, keep appearing. Okay? So that's a called tell me what you want to do. Now, let's say you don't actually want to put it in. You just want to learn more about footnotes or whatever. Then down here, you can go to different topics and, and use it more like a help if you want to do that. Okay. But then what you'd want to do is you'd want to type in the full word footnote so it knows exactly what you do want to do and notice it allows you to get help on footnote. We'll look up anything it can about footnote on the web. So it just does a ton of different things for you. Okay. We're going kind of quickly because these are pretty easy kinds of things, but does anybody have any questions so far? Uh, no questions so far. Okay. All right. Um, oh, wait, um, one quick uh, one just came in. Um, how did you get the navigation screen again? Okay, there's lots of different ways, but I'll show you how I did it. Um, I did it simply by, notice down here it says page. I just clicked on page and it brought up the navigation screen. Okay, another way to bring up the navigation screen because one, remember one of the navigation features is the find feature or the search feature. Um, if, if you guys know your shortcut keys and know that control F is find, that automatically brings up your navigation pane because it wants to find in uh, using navigation. So that would be another way of doing it. And then finally, um, on the view tab, because anytime you're trying to look for something, you're going to you're going to find it there as well. So there's a lot of different ways of doing it. But I like either clicking on page or just doing control F to find. Great question. Any other um, question? How did you add a flippable checkbox? Or how okay. do you add a, f a fillable checkbox, not flippable? Oh, fillable. I'm like, what's yes. a flippable checkbox? Fillable. Um, so that's a good question. Um, we aren't, well, uh, we aren't quite there yet. Um, so can we, uh, can you table that just for a second? Now, if you're within JP, you have it on your uh, toolbar, um, a fillable, uh, uh, checkable and a non-checkable tool, but even if you aren't, we're going to show you how you can do that and create your own shortcut. Okay. Okay. So, um, so the next thing we're going to cover. So that'll um, be part of. There's another one here. What does JP stand for? You mean NJP? Oh, North sorry. North yes. North That's a, uh, sorry. So we've got uh, two different groups of people here. You got uh, NJP is Northwest Justice Project. So LS NTAP is housed here at Northwest Justice Project in Seattle. So we have a few people that are attending the presentation here uh, live or from one of our 18 offices here. Um, and we've got about another um, 60 or 70 people that are uh, throughout the country at different organizations. So NJP is Northwest Justice Project. Got it. All right. Okay. Um, one more here that's uh, directly relevant. Um, 
somebody missed how to add the narrow ribbon toolbar below the standard one. Oh, that is a brilliant segue into what I am covering right now, which is called the Quick Access Toolbar. And that's right here. This is the narrow ribbon that you're referring to. Um, a lot of people don't even realize that it exists. And let me show you um, where it normally resides. It normally resides up here in the top left-hand corner. And it normally has about three or four tools on it. So nobody knows why it's there, what it is, and nobody does anything with it. And it is one of the most useful things that you can learn because you have so many different tabs now that the things that you want to use quickly, you can't use as quickly. You're just going back and forth between tabs all the time and they and it changes, right? So is it, wouldn't it be nice if the things that you use most were just always there? or even some things maybe you don't use as often, but you don't want to have to remember where they are. You just want them available. That's what the Quick Access Toolbar was designed for. It was designed for a ribbon that was a little bit cumbersome because it had so many tabs, and this is so everybody can make their own personal, I want these tools. And it's so easy to use. Now, I was telling you normally it's above the ribbon, and I like it below the ribbon. So how do you move it? Well, the one thing I asked you to learn today was if you don't know how to do something, you're supposed to right click, click on whatever you don't know how to do. So let's try it. We're going to right click on an empty part of this um, quick access toolbar. And do you see where it says show quick access toolbar above the ribbon? So that's where it normally is. You're probably seeing just two or three little tools that are kind of useless up here. Um, and so in order to get it below the ribbon, which is my preference, because first of all, why would you not want the tools you use most to be as close to your document as possible? Second, when you put a lot of tools on, which I do, it means it completely smashes your document name so you have no clue what document you're working in anymore. And fourth, this top title bar already has a lot going on, so you miss the opportunity of putting a lot more tools on. So for all those reasons, I prefer it below. So I right click on it. That wasn't the right place. I need to find it. Here we go. And I say show below the ribbon. So that's the start. Okay, so now how do I get tools onto the ribbon? A lot of people will answer, unfortunately, you're not all right here in front of me, So, but a lot of people will normally answer, oh, just drag them. Well, that doesn't work. Um, I think they're afraid you're going to drag important tools off the ribbon. I don't know, but it doesn't work. So if you don't know how to get a tool on the ribbon, what would you do? Well, the one thing I asked you to learn is if you don't know how to do something, right click on whatever you don't know how to do. So let's say that you do bullets. So you're going to right click on the bullet tool and you're going to say add to quick access toolbar. That's how easy it is. There it is. Then I decide, no, I really don't do bullets that much. I want it gone. Don't know how to do that. Yes, you do. Right click, remove from quick access toolbar. That's how easy it is. Now, the problem is not everything is on the ribbon. So for instance, some of your most used things, file open, file save, file print, it would drive me crazy if every time I needed to do some of the most oftenly used things, I had to click on file and come to, to this spot to do it. That's just crazy. So the very first thing I add is open, save, um, save as, all of these different things, um, send as an email, send as a PDF, all of those different things. But a lot of those aren't on the ribbon. So how do I get them in? You can't just right click on them. Well, there's a couple ways. One is if you click on the down arrow at the very end of your quick access toolbar, a lot of the ones you want are going to be right here. But even if I didn't tell you that, you would know that all you would have to do in order to add things that you can't seem to add would be to right click on the quick access toolbar and then you're going to say I'd like to customize it. 
I'm going to customize the quick access toolbar. And all of this is in your handout. So don't worry if you say, oh, my gosh, what did she say? How did I do that? It's on page, uh, starts on page six, and it uh, goes for quite a ways. So notice I'm on the quick access toolbar right now, and you're seeing two different parts here. The left-hand side says popular commands. Somehow Microsoft decided what it thinks are the most popular commands, and I think it's a terrible list. So what I do is I click on this down arrow, and notice all the different options you have here. You can say, I want to see all commands, which is where we're going to go. You can also say, I want to see just the things that are on the file tab. Remember, I just mentioned all the things that are on the file tab. So if you want to, basically, these are just subsets of all commands. So if you don't want to look through everything, you can narrow it down. Okay? But I love doing all commands um, because then I get to see everything that's available. And then you go to whatever command you want. Now, obviously, there are a lot of commands. If I want to go to quickly to something, let's say I'd like to quickly go to print, click on any of these, type a P, and it will bring you down to the P's. Now, a lot of you think, oh, well, then I'll type in an R, and it'll start narrowing in on print. It won't. It'll go to the R's. So it'll only bring you to the first letter and then scroll down to whatever you'd like to go to. Now, let's say there's something that you'd like to add, paragraph settings. If I double-click now on paragraph settings, or even if I single-click and click on add, the result will be the same. It'll bring it to the bottom of this. This is my quick access toolbar. So this is showing you what's here. Now, even though I just added something, notice you're not seeing it. That's only because you have not yet said OK. So don't think you haven't done anything and cancel, because then you really will have done nothing. Hit OK, and you'll be fine. The problem is, not really a problem, but what if you don't want paragraph settings to be at the end of your quick access toolbar? I'm really anal when it comes to my tools. I like everything that's related to be together, like open and save needs to come to the front. I like print at the back. So I have a very specific order I like things in. So yeah, I could go to paragraph settings now and notice there's up and down arrows here. I can move it up. I can just click a lot of times, but that takes a lot of time and it's a lot of clicking. It's fine, you're only having to do it once, who cares? But I'm gonna double click to remove it. But if before I double click on it or before I click on add, if I click on the tool where I'd like to have it inserted below, then when I click on add, it adds it right below. So it'll just save you a bunch of click up, click down kinds of things, but it's, you know, either way, okay? Now, notice that, well, you might not be able to notice because these lines are so light, but there's a really light line here. There's a really light line there. Those are called separators. And they do nothing except they, they try and visually show you that this is a group of tools that kind of belong together. If you like to put in that kind of separation, like I have undo and redo, and I've got separators before undo and after redo, because those are two tools that kind of make sense to go together, right? And so the separator tool is always going to be at the very top of whatever list you're looking at. So if, let's say, after save as, I would like to have a separator between that and close, close all. Then I'll click on save as, double click on separator, because remember it always does it below. And now I'm going to have another little line there. Okay? I don't want it, so I'll double click to remove it. And then if I click on OK, well, I, I guess I will add something just so you know that this worked. Um, I'll click add a footer. So I'll double click on that and it's right here. I'm going to actually uh, bring that down to the bottom so that it's more visible to you. Click on OK, and you'll see that out of footer is right here now. OK? I don't want out of footer, so I'm going to remove. So you know now how easy, how amazingly easy it is to create um, a quick access toolbar that's 
that has a lot of the things that you'd like on it, but you may not know what kinds of things you really want to put on there. So let me just go through some of the ones, and again, this is in your handout, so if you don't remember, don't worry about it, but some of the ones I think are kind of handy. New blank document just brings up a new sheet of paper. Uh, open just brings you to your open screen, right, to open a new document. Save. Um, save as. So <clears throat> save as is nice not just to uh, save it as a different name or whatever, but it also allows you to, if you want, you can save it as a PDF or you can save it as a template or, or whatever other types of documents you'd like to save it out as. Okay, so I like having save as right next to it. Um, this is close. And the reason I like close, close closes the document. Have you ever closed the last document and accidentally, out, um, by clicking on this X and actually accidentally exited out of Word? That is so frustrating to me. I hate that. And I always click on the X. I've been an X clicker for years. Um, so that's why I put close on here is so that I don't exit out of Word accidentally. Then this one I love, it's email. Instead of going to file, share, send to email, blah, 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 I can just click on this and it will immediately put this as an attachment into my Outlook document ready for a name, okay? And then the one to the right of that is the same, only it PDFs it first. It saves it as a, P it, no, it doesn't save it as a PDF. It puts it into the attachment as a PDF which in my opinion is so much better than saving it as a PDF because most of the time, the second you've saved something as a PDF, you no longer want it. It's gonna be out of date, right? But you want the person receiving it to get it as a PDF so they won't make changes. So simply by clicking on this, because I have a table of contents, it's asking me if I wanna update that and I'll say yes. But it'll, and this is kind of a long document so it's gonna take a second but it PDF'd my document, put it in to the uh, email in two seconds. It, that is such a time saver. And yet you don't have all this, these extra PDFs on your hard drive that you'll never use, okay? Or you'll have to delete. Um, page setup, you may or may not want that. It depends on if you do much with margins and that sort of thing. Um, one of my clients did. These next two things though, I really like. A lot of people don't realize that you can do screenshots in the in Microsoft Word, in Outlook, all those different things have screenshots, okay? So what is a screenshot? Well, let's say, have you ever been in Excel and you've wanted to send somebody something that's kind of highly formatted, you copy and paste it into something else and the formatting completely goes away and it looks horrible, okay? If you're in Excel, and you'd like to have this, let's say, in your Word document, make sure that it's the last thing that you've seen. So I'm seeing my Excel right now, I'm gonna go straight to my Word document, okay? And then I'm going to click on take a screenshot, okay? And when I, what, okay, wrong one, this one, take a, take a screenshot. Um, and then notice how Word immediately disappears, which is why it was important I was on the screen that I wanted to take a shot of right before going into Word, okay? So now I have these crosshairs and I just drag across as much or as little as I want, let go, and it's absolutely perfect in my document, okay? And that's not just at Word, it's across all applications. But again, you look at whatever it is that you wanna see. So um, if I'm in uh, something on the web or something like this, I see something, I've done some research, I've got this. All I have to do is then go straight to Word. And again, click on screenshot, drag across whatever it is I'd like and boom, I've got the screenshot. Really a cool feature. Now the one that I accidentally clicked on first, which is similar to screenshot, see how close they look? Um, this one does have take a screenshot on it, but it also allows you to take an entire, or a screen clipping is what I should have called it. 
because what I first showed you was a screen clipping. These are screenshots. This is showing you every single open window that I've got going on right now. So as long as I don't mind the entire window being put in my document, that's what it does, okay? So these are super helpful if you're doing anything with screens. So we've got a, a few quick questions here. Sure. Um, one of them was um, where people can find the document. Um, we've added it to, to the um, handout section, but we also have a direct link to it in the chat section in case your handout section hasn't. Um, uploaded. Um, second one is, um, so taking a um, screenshot, um, is taking a screenshot the same as the snipping tool? Yes, it's similar to the snipping tool. Okay, so basically the same thing. Um, so to get the screenshot, um, do you have to add a custom um, button to your toolbar? That's a really great question, not at all. So it's, um, if you think of the fact that you're really inserting something into your document, right, the logical place to find that would be on the insert tab. And so right here is screenshot. And so if you just want to add one of the um, screens, the entire thing, then you just, again, you just click on whichever one you want. Or down here is screen clipping. And that's also a way for you to be able to add it to your quick access toolbar. If you want to add screenshots to your quick access toolbar, you would just right click on screenshot and add to quick access toolbar. It's still gray for me because it's already on there. Or if you want to add screen clipping, which is actually my favorite, I use that much more than screen uh, shot, you can right click on screen clipping and add to quick access toolbar. Okay, and that's how I got those on there. You can also go through the whole customized thing, but that's how I added them. Okay. Um, there's another question here, um, which is uh, slightly related. They saw that um, you had the uh, read aloud as a quick access option. Um, they were curious how, how you get that there and um, how, how to use it. Okay. Um, I didn't realize that I had put that on here, but um, where are you seeing the read aloud? I'm or are you seeing for, it in my handout? Um, I'm waiting for them to, to uh, type back an answer. Um, I've got somebody else who says that they don't see read aloud. Are they looking at Excel? I have, I do have, okay, well, let me look here. Um, so, in Excel, there's one that I do like called Speak Cells on Enter, and I don't know where, I teach that when I, if you come to the third class, I think you said that um, things that cross all applications, mm -hmm. um, speak might down here and speak and speech that might do that for you where you can, um, you absolutely can dictate. Um, and, uh, but speech requires that you set up your speech um, with your, you know, making sure it works with your microphone and all that. And you can actually uh, talk into um, Word and, and any of the applications and have it listen and, and have it type for you. I don't know if that's what you're talking about. Um, I'd be happy to go into that a little bit later, but just in, in order to finish the topics that we have, let's go ahead and do that. And if we want to okay. take that offline, we can, we can look, but that is definitely something that you can do. So I've got one more quick one here, how to add yep. a save as PDF icon to the quick access bar. Gosh, well, kind of already have it, right? Because I do have Save As and PDF. If it, uh, but if that isn't good enough, then I don't. I don't know if I click on if I right click on this PDF here. Let's try it. If I right click and say Add to Quick Access Toolbar, if it'll take just that or if it'll give me another drop down, it's hard to tell. So we're just going to say Add to Quick Access Toolbar and it did it. It saved it just that one. So that would be a way of doing it. Another way of doing it would have been to right click, go to the customize the quick access toolbar you saw before, go to your all commands, and then go to save as. But because you guys won't have the save as tool 
on your quick access toolbar yet. So when you go to all commands, then you might wanna go to the S's and come down here until you see save as PDF and then just double click it over to the other side. Any other questions? Yeah. Email it. Uh, email as PDF is also going to be absolutely. If you right click, go to. So the question was here. There's somebody in in my classroom, and she asked, "How do I do the email as PDF?" And you go to customize the Quick Access Toolbar. Now, anybody who's working for NJP should have my toolbars, which should already be on there. Um, speaking of which, if you aren't uh, with NJP, and you know there will be people that will have Quick Access Toolbar NV. And they'll want, if you make a nice toolbar, they'll want your toolbar. And so the cool thing is, when you're in this um, box, notice it says import export. So I could easily say export all um, customizations and then save it on my desktop and email it to anybody who wants them, which I do for my client. Now, you may want to put, you know, your company name or your initials or something so you know who did it but you can export and then set, email it to somebody. They can save it somewhere on their system. And then instead of saying export, all they have to do is say import and go to wherever it's stored and import that file. Um, now, if you do that, just be aware when you import, if you have any personal tools on there, they'll disappear. It's, it's all or nothing. So remember, if you have some tools that you want to keep, just remember what they are, right? maybe write them down or take a screenshot. There's a screenshot for you. Take a screenshot of what you have so you can quickly add them. And then you'll have a toolbar with everything, your stuff and the other person's stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I'm happy, um, Sart, to send you, well, you should have a copy, but I can send you a copy of this quick access toolbar or whatever and, and uh, Excellent, that would be great, and then we can add it to the uh, blog post afterwards. Um, Although so people are gonna, if again, if NJP people don't do this because you should already have it, and you're right, right. have a program ribbon. So I don't want to, mm -hmm. I don't want to mess you guys up. <laughs> yeah, right. And ribbon's a whole other feature. Um, so yeah. um, uh, two more quick questions, uh, just to clarify for people, which version of Word are are you in and demoing everything on? Office 365. Yep. Um, and then uh, someone has customized the toolbar uh, following along, but it's very spread out. Is is there a way to condense it or make it smaller the way that yours is appearing? Can you yeah, um, so if you click on the down arrow, um, if you're in touch mouse mode, uh, because you have a screen that allows you to um, uh, use your fingers or whatever, um, or write on it or whatever, then it's going to spread apart all the tools because it thinks you're using your finger, and so it, it spreads them out. Um, see, see this? If I click on that and I go to touch, see how spread out they are? <laughs> um, in fact, they're so spread out, uh, I need to move this out of the way now to be able to, uh, there we go. Um, to be able to do this and to to go back to mouse. Do you see that? So that's, so first put the tool on by clicking on this down arrow and putting on the touch mouse mode and make sure it's on mouse and not on touch. So it's the touch that spreads it out. Okay, any other questions? Looking good. All right. Okay, so um, some of the other tools on the Quick Access Toolbar. View table grid lines. Now, if you, I don't know if you use tables much, um, but both for tables and also for um, uh, labels. If any of you guys ever do labels, I'm just gonna quickly go to labels here under mailings. But you know, labels are just a table, right? So I'm gonna click on new document. And what happens a lot of times when you do a label or you do a table, unless you, unless you actually can see and print the grid lines, you don't know where 
the grid lines are. You don't you don't really know where the cell starts and stops. And it's under the table's uh, toolbars, I mean, ribbon, if you want, but it's always like, okay, is it under the design or is it under the layout? I'm not quite sure. So to have that right here so that you don't accidentally start typing in your label in this area or something like that, I just think it's so handy to have. So that's another one that I really like to have is view table grid lines. And again, that would be if you're in a table, you're going to have your design and your layout uh, toolbars. And so you're going to click on the one that has the view table grid lines. You're going to right click on it and you're going to add to quick access tool if you want it. OK. If you do anything with styles, I, I do. So I have different style tools here, but you may or may not do that. Um, the format painter. Are you guys aware of what format painter does? Format Painter is phenomenal. What it does is it allows you to take formatting that you like and copy it. It's like copy and paste, but it copies and pastes formatting. So let's say you love this for your headings, okay? So let me put in a couple extra headings here. Okay, so I've got some headings. Um, and I would like them all to look like this heading. So simply by selecting the heading, and notice that one could argue I don't need to have the, it up here because once you select text, you also see the um, format painter right here. But either way, so you click on the format painter and that will allow me to add all of that formatting simply by selecting that text. There it is. Okay, now, notice though that I can't do it again. So if you ever wanna do it multiple times, then instead of single clicking, double click on the paintbrush. Notice it looks like a paintbrush, but then you can click and then click and then click and add as many, change as much formatting as you want. Now notice when I highlighted, and but notice I still have my paintbrush. That means if I click again, it's gonna do it again. So you either have to press escape or click on the paintbrush to make it stop, okay? Now, let's say that this were centered and there was a lot of other things going on. If you don't want that centering to be added to whatever you're going to. So let's say I'd like everything on this, but I don't want the centering. The centering, remember, is a paragraph format. And remember that paragraph formats always get saved in that last paragraph symbol. So if I want everything but centering, then I need to highlight everything but that last paragraph symbol to copy when I hit the format painter. And then when I paint, it's gonna do everything but center. If, on the other hand, I highlight the whole thing and hit the format painter, then any paragraph formatting will also happen and it also becomes centered or whatever paragraph formatting I've decided to do. Bullets, numbering, all of that. So take the paragraph symbol. If you want the paragraph formatting, don't if you don't. And that's what this is. This is spell check. But while we're on the process of spell check, do you see down here? on my quick access toolbar. Do you see when I point to it, it said word found proofing errors? If you find a little X on this document, that's how you know you have some spelling mistakes. You can just click on this and it'll go to the first spelling error it finds. So you may or may not want to use that to find all your different errors, but it's neat to know that if you see a check mark there instead of an X, that you're good to go, that, that you don't have any spelling errors, okay? All right, now we're finally at the point that I promised whoever asked me how you get the um, filled check marks. Um, if you're not with Northwest Justice Project, you can create your own so easily and it fits into my topic of auto text, um, saving auto text items. Um, so the first one you're gonna do is you're gonna go to insert just to get the first checkable or fill checkbox or whatever. And you're going to go to, if I can find it, um, 
I'm trying to look for insert icons. Um, where is it? Is it under shapes? Yeah. Oh, no, not shapes. Um, now, where is it? Well, that's interesting. I'm not seeing a chart. Um, maybe under the drawing toolbar. Oops, I didn't need to do that. Sorry. I can't believe I'm not finding a checkbox. Um, let's see if I have it in auto text. Nope. Oh, here's icon. Okay, that's going to take a little while. So it's just, I guess it was just this incredibly weird. <laughs> I guess I haven't seen this tool look like this before. But um, so here we've got, let's try and find a, hopefully they still have checkboxes. Um, so here's a check, it's not a checkbox and an X. But rather than waste too much time, unless any of you are seeing it before I am, are you seeing? You should be able to find a checkbox here, and if not, I can send you one. It's just if you look at all these different things, I'm not sure where they put checkboxes on. Um, not on arrows. I've created, for all my law firms, I've created icons to already do checkboxes and stuff. So I've not seen this new look. But let's um, let's just pick one. Let's say that we've got, let's do the X. Let's say that's a checkbox or if I can find that. This is somewhat like a checkbox, but it's not. Now I'm trying to find my X. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm just going to say something as a checkbox, and we'll have to find exactly where a checkbox is. So let's say that this is our checkbox. So I'm going to insert that into my document, okay? And now, oh, wait a minute. I know where a checkbox could possibly be. Here, we'll do this. Um, so you're probably not seeing a developer tab, okay? So instead of just doing an icon, I'm going to show you something different because I couldn't find the right icon. Under the developer tab, there's, um, let me show you how to get the developer tab because you don't have one, right? So if you don't have one, how do you get one? Did anybody remember right click? So we're going to right click and we're going to say this time we're going to customize the ribbon because up here, this is the ribbon, not the quick access toolbar. And the thing is, the developer tab is generally unchecked. So all you have to do is check it, okay? And click on okay. So then we're on the developer tab and there's this little box here under controls, if you click on the down arrow, that is called legacy forms and legacy controls. So under the legacy forms, notice there's something called a checkbox. So we're going to click on that, and you're going to say, oh, well, that's nice, Sandy, but it's unchecked. Well, the cool thing is you can just double-click on it, and you can say checked, and click on OK, and now it's checked. But you don't want to have to go to developer, legacy tools, all that every time, right? Wouldn't it be cool if there's something that you could just call checkbox or unchecked box? So I'm going to highlight the checkbox, being careful not to get the paragraph symbol because I don't want to start a new line every time. I just want the checkbox. So I've just highlighted that. And I've actually uh, put these tools, they're called building blocks. I've, I've put these tools on my uh, quick access toolbar because I love to use these. So one of them is called save selection to auto text gallery. 
But if you don't have this tool, then you'd have to go to insert and you'd have to go over to quick parts and there's auto text and there's save selection. So that's a long way to go. Um, or you can go to auto text. Again, you have to save selection to auto text gallery. Okay. Instead, go there once, right click and add it to your quick access toolbar, right? Because I think you're going to use this a lot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this selection to my auto text gallery. It's going to ask me what I want to name it. Okay. And I'm going to name it checkbox. Okay. And notice I'm saving it to the auto text gallery. It just says that it's going to be an auto text. And then I can give it a category if I want. So let's say I'm going to have a category of just little snippets like this, maybe icons. So if I want, I can create a category and call it icons so that they all get stored together so they're easier to find. Does that make sense? So I'm going to click on OK. And for the rest, it's OK. So I'm going to click on OK. Or you could give it a description, but I think that's pretty self-descriptive, right? I'm going to click on OK. Now, the other tool that I put on my toolbar is to show my auto text gallery. So now, all I, because I have this on here, this show auto text gallery, I can just click on that. Because I created a category called icons, they're all going to be put together. And now I can just click and boom, instead of having to recreate this every single time, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make this not checked, even though you could just double click on it. I'm going to make an unchecked box simply by once again trying not to get that paragraph symbol. That's the hardest part of this whole thing. Clicking on this, this time I'm going to call it checkbox. Uh, oh, I called the first one checkbox. I'm going to call this um, blank box or unfilled checkbox or whatever is going to make it so that you remember that it's a checkbox without a check in it, right? So I'll call it blank box. Well, I don't know. Um, again, I'd like it to go under the icons so it's grouped together, right? And click on OK. So now if I want a checkbox, I can do that. But if I want an unchecked box, again, it's going to show up here. So I've got blank box there. And then Click on here and checkbox. How cool is that? For something that you do a lot, to use these snippets. I use these snippets for if there are letters you send a lot and you want to put paragraphs in there. They're just always going to be available and you're going to be able to use them anywhere you want. And so I save those as auto text, but when, when I saved it, there were other galleries I could have saved it in. I could have saved it in a tables gallery. So I can save tables I use a lot, and that's what this is, okay? So I realize we're at 11. We had a couple more tools I would have loved to have covered, but um, if there are questions, I'll take those first. And if there aren't, then I'll cover the last few tools on my toolbar. There are some more uh, items that I would have loved to have gone over in the book, but they are in the book, so feel free to look those over. And as, as a reminder, the book is both under the handout section and it is um, in the chat section. Um, um, it does, we got some good comments. Somebody else did find it under uh, developers as you were finding it there. Um, someone was able to um, search for the term checkbox, right click and um, add that to the quick, quick access toolbar. So that may be a, a newer version of a checkbox. Um, Great. Uh, Ed, please, anybody who has questions, either uh, use the raise your hand function so that I can unmute you so that you can ask your question aloud, um, or type a question into the uh, questions box and we can read that aloud. Looks like. Um, uh, could you go over again how to add the developers tab in 365? Yeah, can anybody else do that? You simply right click on the ribbon, customize the ribbon, and click on developer. 
and click OK. Okay. Um, when we're referring to the quote chat section at the handout section, um, where are these located? So the handouts um, are in our uh, so handout section and chat section in your uh, go to webinar control panel. Um, there is a series sharing webcam audio dashboard uh, polls handouts chat. Um, some of those will be there. If it doesn't appear, click view and there are check boxes under view um, and check chat or check handouts. Um, and then that should give you um, the uh, where you can read the chat to all audience participants um, or see the handouts. Um, handouts is a little bit buggy, which is why I put it in chat also. Um, depending on when you logged in, um, sometimes it doesn't repopulate properly, uh, but chat definitely should have the link. Um, next question, when I open the navigation panel, the heading section does not reflect my document and shows no data. Is there a way to fix that? Yes, use styles. So um, you need to apply heading one, heading two styles, not just, you can't just, so let me show you. Um, so here I have a new document and these are my headings. Um, let's say this is a main heading, like, well, maybe I should make it a little chapter one. And then um, this chapter one is going to have, let's say it's got macros and it's got quick access toolbar. They, these are all subheadings to, to chapter one. And under the quick access toolbar, I'm going to have adding um, and removing. Okay. So, whoa, removing. Um, so, and then let's do a chapter two. Okay. So, let's say you say, okay, well, this is my heading. My heading is it's bolded and it's um, centered and all that. Notice absolutely nothing is going here because it's not really considered a heading. I would have to add a heading style, a heading one style to that. Um, and as soon as I do, notice chapter one shows up. And if I want to add, uh, I'd, I'll add a heading two style for, I, excuse me, heading one style also for chapter two because a style just means that or a heading one means it's a major level heading. Then this is a subheading, so this would be a heading two, and this would be a heading two, and this is a subheading of QAT, so that would be heading three and heading three. And so now notice heading one is a major level heading, heading two is one in, heading three is another in, but now all of a sudden you have that look that you wanted, you have these headings. So it's not considered a heading just because you think it is. It's considered a heading because you added heading styles to your text. Did that solve that? I think so, yes. Okay. Yes, definitely. Okay. Um, as we're waiting for another question, unless do you already have another question? Nope. I wanted to show you this because it, uh, excuse me, I think it's this one. It says formula. This is so confusing. Um, if you look for it under all commands, if I right click and I go to customize the ribbon and I go to all commands, where you're going to find it, it's going to be called the calculate tool because it adds, subtracts, multiplies, stuff like that. It's under calculate. Um, and yet, uh, it shows up on your toolbar as formula. I don't know why, but it doesn't matter. What it does is I've seen attorney, well, not just attorneys, but I've seen people copy numbers like chairs, tables, tablets, copy numbers from a let's say an email they get, and they just wanna add them or subtract them or whatever, and they don't wanna to have to copy it into Excel or whatever. So let's say I wanna add 67 plus eight. If I have them in my document, if I just highlight them, and I click on the formula tool, look at the status bar in the lower left-hand corner. As soon as I click, do you see it says the result of the calculation is 75? 
not only do you see it there, but that actually is it. You can paste it then in your document. Okay. Now it doesn't automatically change. If I change this to nine, it wouldn't automatically change it. But just for a quick and dirty ad, if I just want to put 10 here, again, I just highlight it. I click on my calculate tool. It says it's 77. And if I want, I can then paste it into my document. If I'd rather subtract 10, I can just type a minus in front of it and calculate and it'll subtract. If I want to multiply, I can just put a asterisk and it will multiply. So you just highlight, you just click on formula, it'll tell you what the answer is and paste. Okay, now the problem is what if you have something like this and, and even worse if you have more than one, if you've got tabs in here and you've got more than one row of numbers, right? The problem is normally when you highlight, it goes from left to right. I can't just get one column, right? Well, that's true if you just do a normal select. But if you hold your Alt key down, you know you have Alt, Control, Shift. If you hold your Alt key down and start in the bottom right and go up to your left, you can actually highlight a column. And then you can calculate, or in this case, formula, <laughs> and then go wherever you want, once again, and paste. So you can, you can add this column, and then make sure you hold your Alt key down, otherwise it doesn't work, right? But so little things like that can make your life so much easier. I remember there, I think it was a divorce case or something like that, where they were sent this, you know, lists and lists of division of assets and, the you know, the names, numbers, things like that. And two um, assistants were reading the numbers to each other and adding them in to Excel or, or calculator, and they got it wrong like three times. You don't even have to worry about getting it wrong because you're just copying and pasting. Okay? Be sure, though, that if anywhere, like if this says in 1987 or whatever, make sure you don't accidentally highlight something that's a number that you didn't intend to have in your calculation because it sees a number and it just goes crazy. It just adds it or subtracts it or whatever. All right, I think we have four more minutes. If there's anything else um, that we can go over in that time, I'll take questions on anything. Uh, sorry, sorry about the typing noise in the background there. I forgot to mute. Um, so two of them, and the uh, one is on the cut and paste from different documents into a new document. Um, how do you either merge the formatting or remove the formatting? Oh, I love that question. And actually, that's one of the first topics in my handout, and I just forgot to cover it, or, or yeah, I just didn't cover it. But so. Um, let's take something with some of this nice formatting because I do have heading styles in here. Okay, so I'm going to take this and copy it, okay? And then I'm going to go to a new document. One of the cool new features now is that when you go to paste, you have all these different options. And you can actually, and it's called paste preview, you can just point to the different options and see what they do to see which one you like. Like this one says, hey, um, one of them is look like the, it says use the destination theme, which you may or may not understand what that means, but it's like, well, do you like the look of it? That's the most important thing. Keep source formatting says, I'd like to keep the look of where I'm copying from. Merge formatting means use the formatting of where I'm copying to. Okay, so use whatever whatever they have here. Picture means make it into a picture so it can't be changed, right? And then this says keep text only, says strip all formatting, strip all uh, tables, uh, pictures, things, uh, graphics, things like that. So these are your options. And if you don't know that, if you don't do it like this, let's say you just say, I'm just wanna, gonna paste, Sandy, that's all I wanna do is paste. Well. The cool thing is, I don't know if you noticed, but you have all those options right here. As soon as you paste, 
it will always give you those options right here until you start typing something else and you'll have exactly the same even though it wasn't a preview it's sort of a post view but you can that easily change to any one of the other options another question sorry um, so there's two more questions. Um, okay. uh, how do I add formulas um, to the ribbon? Well, we know that to the ribbon, no, but to, you mean to the quick access toolbar, you just right click on the quick access toolbar and you say customize the quick access toolbar and you go to all commands and there should be a calculate by typing in C, right? There's calculate, and then just add it. Just double click or click add and click on OK. You just have to remember, and that's the sad thing, that it says calculate here, and it says formula once it's on there. And unfortunately, it, it's what keeps me in business, those stupid mistakes that Microsoft makes that are so confusing to people. Okay, so next one is um, how um, how do I add, um, for example, um, attorney-client privileged um, to only select email emails for clients and not to coworkers? So how um, and I'm a little bit unclear whether they're trying to just get this added into the um, intro line or to the text. Um, which I think this may be more of an Outlook question. Well, certainly if it's an email, I would think it would be an Outlook question. Mm -hmm. um, and there's no, I mean, if you're sending to two groups of people, then you could, again, you could, yeah, um, you can create auto text entries in Outlook as well. And so she could, if she's sending to 20, out of office people, she could add that text as an auto text to one um, and then send it to another group. But if you're adding all the people at once, it's not going to be able to differentiate which is which unless you want to do a mail merge at, or an email merge. And if you do an email merge and create a table saying this is an attorney, this is whatever these you know different people are and put um, the uh, client privilege or whatever on on the ones that are attorneys, then you could do things like that. You can say, if it's an attorney, do this or something to that effect. But yeah. If it were me, I'd just leave attorney client privilege and everything and not worry about the people that it doesn't pertain to. They, uh, but anyway, that's. Okay. okay. Um, I mean, it, it can't know who needs it and who doesn't. This is basically it. You have to tell it who does and who doesn't need it. Yep. Um, so there was a question over, is it, is it okay to uh, print the uh, tip workbook? And yes, that, that's what it's there for. Um, the, the only restrictions that we have on it is um, that when uh, sharing it, that um, credit to Sandy Raylander um, stays on there. Um, but that is part of the... Um, part of the course materials, and if it's easier for you to read them while printing them out, definitely. Um, the the link should get you directly to a to a doc docx that is downloadable, um, and you can view it on your computer or print it. Um, uh, two things that I'd like to point out is it, even if you don't want to print the whole thing, the back two pages are word shortcut keys, which are generally so much faster than not using them. And so printing out those two pages um, and having them next to you sort of to learn them is kind of a cool thing. And if you do print it, the world will thank you if you print it double sided because it uh, my documents tend to be rather long and it's nice to just save some paper. Um, and the last note on that is I know people will hate me for this, at least the admin, if you can print it in color, it really is kind of nice to be able to see the different colors of the tools and stuff. but. Don't ever tell anybody that I said that.
Any other questions? Uh, the um, we had another question about where to get it. It's uh, on either the chat or what were you saying, Sart? Oh, Sart, are you still there? All right. Um, yes, the it so is. She, she actually attended in person, but is not on the webinar. So should she just shoot you an email or? Um, I, I can send it out in an email to all NJP. Um, additionally, it is on the lsntap.org website under the registration for the uh, webinar. Um, the And it will be in the summary blog post that we put together within a week with the full video. So it will be downloadable in two places online also. But yeah, shoot me an email and I can also email it to people. All right. Any other questions? Um, Yes, um, uh, just a second, reading through, I'm getting a few coming in. Um, do you have uh, time to do a quick, uh, how to do a table of contents, which is a, it's a pretty big topic. Well, yes and no. If you, if you use heading styles, the way that um, then life is easy. Um, so remember I told you I use style, so you basically have your table of contents over here on the left-hand side of the screen, right? Um, because Word knows which headings you want to have, and here's my table of contents, right? So if I get rid of this, if you've done what I, which is using the styles, right? So if you've got the styles, then if you go to references and you go to table of contents and then you insert whichever look you like for your table of contents just by clicking on it, there's your table of contents. So is it that easy? Yes and no. Um, notice that it says screen display tips. It has a number, a page one, which is what you want, right? but everybody knows this is really page one of the document. So I do have, as you can see, section breaks in here um, to break the pages and to break the page numbering so that I can say that this is, that this is really page one and not four pages above, right? So what Sart was saying when he said it's a little more complicated, it is in that to set it up to have the right page numbers you do need to put in section breaks and you do need to understand page numbering. Um, but if you do, then that's all there is to, and, and if you use styles, that's all there is to creating a, a table of contents. So um, I know that we have done that class in the past. So if you do want to look through the archives, um, this time we've given you a separate book called uh, Shortcut Tips. But there's also, I think, a one called Word 2013, 2016 out there. It gives you step by step how to create a section break, how to change the page numbering, all of that stuff for creating a table of contents will be in there. And maybe that's a good topic for next year. <laughs> yes. Um, and we do have um, that uh, former book available with the video. Uh, that we had done um, as an earlier one. Um, there will be a follow-up survey to this training. If there are particular topics um, that you want to see P or that you would like to see Sandy cover in the future or for other webinars, please um, definitely put that into the um, survey and we will take that into consideration um, when we do our webinar topics for next year. Um, somebody also asked how they can see the archived copies, and I'm dropping it into the chat right now. Um, there is a YouTube channel called NTAP Videos um, that has a few hundred uh, videos. I think we're up to uh, two or 300 total past trainings that we've done, um, including some of our most popular have been Sandy's yearly. Um, I think we've got probably nine past videos uh, that she has put together. Um, I think that covers all of our, um, actually we've got one more. Um, 
um, how to align bulletins. Bullets. I think it's yeah. meant to be bullet points, yes. Yes, so that's true, bullets and numbering, everybody gets uh, a little upset, and that's really, the topic for that really is um, understanding indents. And what happens is one of these, um, which by the way, indents are part of your paragraph formatting, so are bullets, um, but what happens is this is the indent that will determine this little arrow up here will determine where, uh, I didn't get the arrow, I got the left indent. The left indent will determine where an entire paragraph aligns. So for instance, if I do this and I drag this bottom rectangle, do you see how the whole paragraph is coming in a half an inch? If, however, I drag the top triangle, it says first line indent, it only moves the first line. If I move the bottom triangle, where it says hanging indent, it only moves everything but. So you may say, well, Sandy, I didn't ask you about that. I asked you about how to line up these bullets. Well, these bullets line up on the indents. So if I wanna line this up, I need to have this top one aligned with the rest of those bullets, right? And the bottom one, aligned with the text. And then I have to, I didn't do that quite right, but that's okay. So there we go. But is that a fast way to do it? No, and do you really care? Not really. All you care is that your bullets look wonky and you'd like them to not look wonky. That's a technical term, by the way. So if you want them to line up, one of the things we learned today was the format painter. With a format painter, all you have to do is highlight the bullet you like the look of, click on the paintbrush, drag it what costs the ones that you don't like, and boom, they are lined up. And that is true whether they're bullets or whether it's just paragraph formatting. Just make sure that paragraph symbol is highlighted too. Click on the paintbrush, which you have here, you have everywhere, and drag across the ones that you don't like the look of. So Format Painter is going to save you so much time if you just remember it. Okay, so if I like the look of that one, I can highlight it, click the paintbrush, drag across the rest of them, boom. I can even drag across the ones that don't have bullets because it's gonna change the paragraph formatting of anything, any paragraph it finds. That's my quick answer. Excellent. I think that covers um, our, all the questions that we've got. Thank you so much for coming in, uh, Sandy. And please give us feedback on the um, survey. Our next webinar is over uh, Justice Server and Salesforce. Um, that is coming up on the 26th of June. And then I believe it's July 11th. We have another webinar with Sandy Rylander um, here. So thank you all for attending. Thank you. Oh, we do have a new website that is launching uh, very soon for LSN Tap, so there'll be a new look and feel, and it should be uh, easier to archive or to access some of the most popular archives. Um, if you're interested in giving us feedback on that, please look for an email on the LS Tech email list. Uh, we would love to have some people help us with the usability testing on that. Uh, thank you so much. Enjoy your afternoon. Thanks. And sorry, don't forget I need to sign something. Yes, yes. <laughs>